Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for a very exciting leg of the Where's Shmi Euro Tour. Of course, we're blasting around Europe in the GTC4 Lasso, but today we're back in Turin to visit Sparco, where inside I'm going to be picking up the new look seats for my Ford GT. A couple of weeks ago, we dropped off the car in Milan, came over here with the seats after they had been removed to have them retrimmed inside. Today is the day we're going to see the finished result, the final effect of what I've been going for and there are plenty of other surprises as well. So we're going to be going inside, taking a look at the seats, loading them up into the fastest transporter I think you could find to take them in the GTC 4 or so over to Milan to get them fitted back into the car by Ambrose store. Then I'm going to drive the car back here to Sparco to show you the other little surprises that I haven't yet told you about. So I'm excited, let's head inside and check out the new seats for my Ford GT. This car is getting some seriously good mileage on it during this tour and um, it's getting even more in need of a wash than ever. But what's going to be interesting is there are actually three of us traveling in the car at the moment and that means we've got quite a lot of luggage. I'm on the road for a while, it's filthy back here, I'm gonna have to give it a wash very soon. So somehow we've got to work out how to fold down half the back, one side and the middle piece, and then fit in the full seats, the two backrests and two bases. That's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but first things first, we need to go inside, I need to move the car to a slightly more sociable parking spot as well, head inside, get these seats, and see how they look. Here we are then, straight indoors at Sparco to take a look, and you might remember we had a glance down the assembly line behind me, but Sparco make the original parts that are installed in the cars, so my seats were made right here, sent over to Canada to be installed into my GT before the car then flew over to Europe again to be delivered. So we had a look down the assembly line, but just as a reminder, I'm gonna show you what my seats originally looked like, which was this, called the Dark Energy Theme, black Alcantara, the ribbed central section, but with black stitching, still with the carbon fiber though and the silver cross brace up at the top. But the inspiration for how we're changing those came from this, the Golf Heritage Edition of the Ford GT, the special version paying tribute to the Golf GT4 that won at Le Mans back in the 60s and that is to do with the stitching that you have right here. So this car is golf blue with orange accents. My car is liquid red with Allen Mann Racing Gold accents, a tribute almost myself to the Allen Mann Racing GT40s and that is the inspiration and that's what we're going to be seeing very shortly. I've also gone with an embroidery up on the headrest and some other small details that I didn't yet mention that we're going to be seeing about the interior of the car as well. So these are all the completed seats ready to be sent off around the world, well actually ready to be sent to the factory in Canada, in Toronto. But I think it's time now to go and see how mine have turned out. So let's do this. I am excited. Fingers crossed, it's going to be epic. Directly alongside where the covers themselves are made, we've got my new seats then, and we've just opened one of the bags. They're normally transported, fully packaged, but inside boxes. But this is our first opportunity to take a look at the top. And this is the backrest. We've got the headrest at the very top of it. So just in here, inside the bag, you can see the gold of the GT logo. Take a look then at this. The Alcantara with the gold embroidery, with the red and gold stitching. The colors are absolutely spot on. Of course, we chose the threads alongside the car out in daylight to make sure that we had the spot on colors. But this, oh, look at the backrest. This is super cool. But what we need to do now is get these loaded into the car, fully packaged so that we protect everything. We're gonna be taking those over towards Ambrose store in Milan, where we can fully unpackage them and take a look, and then ultimately get them inside the car. These are gonna look super, super cool. As you can imagine, this has posed a little bit of a challenge, but we've managed. The seats are now inside the boot of the Lusso, along with three people's luggage and enough space for three people to sit comfortably. Just to show you very quickly inside here, the back is actually pretty decent, but we've loaded everything up. The folding seats, we've got the rear parcel shelves squeezed in as well. But more than enough room for three people to now make this journey. Let me just fold that back very quickly. And with something else that I still have to show you, the first of a number of surprises coming later on in this video. So in Inside here, from Sparco, we have the harnesses for the GT, which you will notice on one side you've got the Ford Performance logo, the other side you've got Sparco, and on the grabs you've got the GT logo in the exact same gold stitch as on the seats as well. So we've got one of those for the driver's seat, also for the passenger seat, and those are going to be fitted while we're over at the Ford store as well. So, exciting times, the fastest transportation for seats currently being stored on the back of a seat, which is slightly unusual. But let's get on the road then, head over to Milan.
in the car then, and as promised, joined by Benzine Ben. And also tucked in the back, we've got Schmark 150. Yeah, and I'm going to read you now the uh, personalization specifications of this car. Uh, <laughs> full itemized. No, no, don't or... worry, we don't need, we don't need the full No, spec. no, okay, it's really handy now. <laughs> but we do have a glass window, it is absolutely boiling. Let's get the car started. Get the air conditioning running, an hour and a half or so to get over to Milan where uh, this adventure continues. Onwards to Milano. So we just had a quick stop actually along the way. But what we're about to have is the glorious sound of this engine as we pull back out onto the, uh, the main road, uh, Cheeky Tunnel. Has to be done really, right. And it goes back into fifth gear. So we need to drop it down to first gear and then uh, a bit of this. So full acceleration for the GT seats then, on board the GT seat corner, so as we make our way onwards with noise to Milan. And we have arrived, so we're just about to pull in here and then we will be at Ambrose Store Ford, I think this is the entrance, if I just come in through here. Perfect, so it feels like quite a long time ago that we were unloading the GT from the trailer just here having brought it over, it is actually lurking in the uh, workshops at the back. But we will go through, unload the seats, and uh, take the day from there. I can't wait to see what these look like. We'll pull the covers back and have a better look. The seats are unloaded, and this is the first time that I've actually seen them alongside the GT. So of course it's been covered up. We've just pulled the covers back, but let me show you everything that we've got here. The seats with their new dual tone stitching, the embroidery, the base as well. Also the harnesses laid out just so we could have a look at it all, and the GT lettering that we've got there as well. But the colors are the exact, like I said, colors to match with the Alan Mann paintwork on the car. So these are going to be installed another day. I'm gonna head off for the moment. We'll come back to see them being fitted into the car which at the moment, by the way, just to come through and show you very quickly, is of course currently completely bare on the inside, just the carbon fibre tarp that you can see missing the bases that fixed and they're rigid uh, inside there because you move the pedal box for the driver's seat and the backrest, of course, very visible, the backboard right behind. So those will be installed and then we're going to see what they look like. Now, small touches, but touches that I think very much complement this car, which is exactly why we've done this. It wasn't possible from new. This is a special one-off from Sparco. Those are going to go in. And just quickly to mention, my almost trophy-like uh, overheating of the paint protection film on the back of the car, a normal thing that happens, but just shows that the car has been driven very, very hard and that can be changed quite easily. The paintwork is absolutely fine underneath. Very exciting though, but we'll say goodbye to these for the moment. The spare seat's still inside their bags, the second seat, the passenger seat, and we'll come back and see these very shortly. Good morning then from Ambrose store. We're back, unfortunately though, it is raining outside, which is not going to be so fun later on when this is all completed, but we are going to be driving the car when it's all fitted and finished over to Sparco to pick up the last little goodies, the things that I've been keeping secret. So what's happening now then, we've popped the car into neutral, pulled it back out so that it's easier to access. That meant reinstalling, uh, loosely speaking, just plugging in the passenger base to uh, set the airbags. But what we've got here then are all of the different pieces, the bases, the backrests, and the harnesses, the bespoke harnesses as well that are part of the GT owner's kit that we're actually going to be seeing later. So these, the six point harnesses get fitted in parallel with the seats. It all happens at the same time. It's going to take a little while, a couple of hours to get all of this fitted. You can see work starting off there on the driver's side before it's all going to be done. And I cannot wait to see what these are going to look like. The weather outside is now absolutely atrocious, but we are making some good progress in here. So you can see the seat taking shape with the head dressed embroideries. Of course, there's still some packaging on the back. I'm intentionally not giving you a full view of this yet. We've started installing the harnesses. So the first part of this you have to do is actually to lock in the base, uh, the fifth and sixth point, I suppose, that come up through the base rest. Then you attach the uh, side bits to the same connections as the seat belts. So you can still use the normal seat belts or use a, a blocker in here. Uh, that's the driver's seat side. And um, you can roughly see how this is all coming together. This is uh, quite exciting at the moment, but there's a lot more still to be done. As you can imagine, this takes a lot of time. But there is a very, very handy, I just pop around here, installation guide from Sparco to show us what to do. The slightly sad thing is I'm gonna be out driving in that rain quite shortly, but come and have a look at this, because inside, we are just about there now with the driver's seat. The harnesses 
uh, for the shoulder straps connect to that part on the backboard. That was actually one of the few options on the car to order to have the brackets pre-mounted. So the backrest is now installed, those are done. These come through uh, from the base, but that is basically a completed seat. So those come down, we fold these over into the middle. You can see, official licensed product from Sparco. And um, yeah, magic. First seat, the driver's seat is completed. Super cool. We're down to the last bit then, the base of the passenger side, but have a look at this with the harnesses fitted. This is so epic. And I know we're talking about relatively small changes here, the dual tone stitch, the GT embroidery, but this makes it a one-off and ties in with the exterior. I like the interior to be focused, to be about driving, particularly some track use by having the harnesses, but to bring a small flash of that color in from the exterior, that's something I love doing across the cars in my garage. And it means, well, if it wasn't particularly bright outside, you'd see the gold of the GT logo on the headrest as you look in. In fact, just have a glance in there. So small details that really just make it match, make it more unique, make it more special. And that might not be the end, but it's definitely something looking very, very nice. So we've just got to get this installed before taking the car out. And remember, I've not driven it for a couple of weeks since dropping it off to have the seats redone and then getting it over to Sparco. Bring it on, I can't wait. And it is done. I am sitting inside the new completed interior of the GT for the first time in my new driver's seat, wearing, of course, the racing harnesses. We've got the gold GT embroidery on the headrest behind me, but I'm very excited about this because, well, it's been quite a long time in the works. Since before the car was even built, back when I was specking it, I had these kind of images in my mind of what the interior could look like, but you were limited from factory to just a couple of different options. So being able to have this car that well the new GT is pretty special and it's very significant to me as well this is I think the true definition of a keeper in terms of its rarity but also the memories I'm building with it so far and the plans that I've got with this car coming up but now adding to that with this new interior a one-off from Sparco small touches I didn't want it to be overkill the embroidery the stitching but also with the harnesses ready and set to go out and drive more on the track which is what this car is built for so what I need to do is jump on the road now it's about an hour and a half in the rain unfortunately to get over to Sparco because there is still this one more little surprise that I've got to show you I haven't driven the car for a couple of weeks I can't wait to get it out on the road let's give a press of the button bring it into life he says I've just managed to lose the key down out of my pocket typical supercar owner problems hey there we go got it GT key right there squeeze that back in so let's get over to Turin to take the car out and uh, yeah see this other little thing that's coming it's time for me to hit the road, but a huge thanks goes to Ambrose Store, the Ford dealer here in Milano. What a magnificent job they've done. I've just been in to say my goodbyes. I've now got the car loaded up with luggage, and of course, having no boot space means it's all in the passenger seat, including the boxes for the harnesses. And also, for driving on the road, back to the three-point seat belt as opposed to the racing harnesses. If you're using the harnesses, really, you should have a hands device and a helmet on, and uh, if you don't have a seat belt plug-in, you also have it chiming away. So we don't want any of that. Anyway, lift system up. Up, pop the car into drive always just gives you a little notification of course everything feels well I think we could say pretty similar nav is set 154 kilometers to empty the slight disadvantage of which is that uh, a tank in this car doesn't get you all that much more than that so we might be filling up fairly soon um, roads I'm hoping are not going to be too busy for this drive at least it's not pouring down with rain like it was earlier but it is not exactly looking great anyway out onto the road lift system down it feels good to be back in the GT. I do need to put the dashboard though into kilometers per hour. That is something I need to work on uh, in a second. But let's get onto the Autostradas, take it one step at a time and see where we get to. There are two things about the Ford GT that I find pretty weird and unusual. The first of them is actually only a problem if you have a car from a miles per hour country that you want to have kilometers per hour display. Now what I mean by that is you actually have to choose kilometers per hour as a specific display kind of gauge or property. So instead of having your oil temperatures or let's say your trip information, you have kilometers per hour. So while you have kilometers per hour up, you can't see anything else. With all the other gauges, you can just scroll up and down between them. With kilometers per hour, it is basically fixed and it always keeps miles per hour in the center. I'm currently driving with cruise control because, hey, it's a GT, it's a Grand Tourer, right? He says, with all the luggage beside me. The other thing that makes it totally not a Grand Tourer is the fuel economy. Honestly, I'm just cruising at 
the speed limit on cruise control. Yeah, it's raining. And um, we've got half a tank left and it says 86 miles to empty. Now, this is, and I think that's optimistic, basically 150 miles or so and the tank is dead. That's all you get out of it. I'll tell you something surprisingly good about the car though, the windshield wipers. This massively kicks my McLaren and Ferrari into the ground in terms of the windshield wipers actually do a good job of wiping the windscreen. Anyway, I'm enjoying the drive, chilling out in the car, having I realised the Ford GT here in Italy as well, which is pretty cool, and we're well on the way towards Turin. Not too much to really talk about, other than just plain sailing down the autostradas. Alrighty then, here I am at the gate at Sparco. They very kindly opened it on arrival. It's pretty cool to bring the car here, where obviously these quite significant parts of the car are actually made and assembled and manufactured as we just saw earlier on in this video. Of course, that wasn't today. Um, fortunately, it's not raining here right at this very second as well, but pull in and uh, go inside, catch up with the team, because they're working on these cars day in, day out, but don't actually see them all that often. Um, anyway, in we go. Let's go see what's up. We're back then where we were with the Lusso picking up the seats, but it's time to head inside, and I've rather hyped this up. So let's go in and take a look then at what it is I'm here to pick up. Inside then, where I'm joined by Nicolo, Ashwin, are you ready to see this? Definitely. Let's do it. Let's show now. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> it's like Christmas time. It is literally like Christmas time. That's quite a distinct shape. I have an idea what might be inside there. This, though, is particularly intriguing. This is the exact size of the boot space in the car. So what could be inside? Let's have a look. I'm going to need to uh, unwrap this and take a look inside. Give me one moment. I'm being that guy who unwraps something really slowly, but in here, take a look at the Ford GT owner's kit exactly matching those seats. How cool is this, right? Let me pull it completely out so that you can have a look. But the same stitching, this is really cool. Let me show you what we have here then, the official Ford GT owner's kit. This is something that you can add to match with your car, so the case itself is literally now in the same spec as the inside. The red and the gold stitching, the gold GT embroidery, and look at this, the Union Jack flag as well, J211, that's my car's chassis number. Inside here though, we have a few more very special things to show you. So let me quickly go through these. The boots that match the car. How cool is that? Is that so, so nice. The gloves, the gold GT embroidery. Inside here though, I'll work out exactly how to open this. This is, well, this is the coolest. You might be able to guess what's coming. But this is the official Ford Performance race suit. Wow, with all the sponsors as per the WEC team. The GT embroidery again, J211. That is so cool. I need to get a mannequin to dress, to dress up wearing all of this. That all goes in this case that fits into the back of the car. And then we've also got the helmet as well. So let me quickly open this to show you too inside here how epic is that j211 the design of the ford performance race team this is really really special this is the kind of stuff that lives with the car forever mementos memorabilia it makes the special car even more special wow it's the moment of truth then We've got the kit. I've taken out the things that are usually in the boot. Of course, the car has paint protection films, so not a problem. But let's see if this is going to be able to fit in here. It should be absolutely perfect. So, carefully does it. Hehe, <laughs> success. That is in. I'm just going to be careful with this for the moment. Just don't want to damage anything. Close this down. You need to give it a little press. Click. Magic. Just like that. So perfect. So cool. So epic. Awesome. It's time to head off. The sun is setting. I've pulled the car out so that they could lock up the gates. But what an adventure this is turning out to be. And before I go anywhere, let me show you the fairly amusing luggage situation that is currently going on inside the GT. So on the best of days, it's a pretty small car on the inside. It's long and wide, but very low and has a tiny, tiny cabin. Two-seater, and you've seen the boot, if you can actually call it a boot. Well, I've taken the owner's kit out. That's now inside, along with my luggage, as is the helmet 
it, which is now inside a box for safekeeping. So back in the boot, I've got the likes of the tyre inflation kit, the trickle charger, some instructions, a few random bits and bobs back there, which means everything else has had to make its way inside the cabin. And you definitely would not be fitting a passenger inside this car anymore. You've got the owner's kit, the helmet box, the harness boxes, my other luggage, and that is the entirety of the passenger side completely taken up. But let me just give you a last look at this. It's come out so, so well. I can't say thank you to Sparco enough. The resulting effect of this is entirely what I wanted to have in the car to go with the exterior as well. Just a few flashes of colour, of course the installation of the harnesses as well, but not going over the top, keeping it very OEM. I mean, this is OEM. It's a bespoke one-off by Sparco who make this original interior. In every car it wears the Sparco tags uh, on the side of the uh, bolsters that you have there as well. And this, with these colours perfectly matched, is now absolutely epic. Honestly, it is amazing. I know some people might have thought uh, I might go a little bit crazier with the whole car, but for me, it's a focused car. The interior should be black Alcantara, lightweight, sporty style, but just a small flash of colour to bring in the exterior to the interior. And that's how I like doing the cars that you see uh, in my lineup and small touches like the GT uh, badges on the straps, all going with the wheels, for example, the BBS FIRs, like on the GT LM race car. So the Ford GT, for me, this is well and truly a proper keeper, now even more so with these extra parts from Sparco. So as I said, a huge thanks to the team here. A huge thanks as well to the team at Ambrose Store for doing the work to actually take the seats out and replace them. This car just gets more and more special by the minute. And for me, yeah, it's, it's really something. I think it's my favourite car that I've ever owned. I can say that before GT. So, thank you very much for watching, as always, guys. Bit of a random one about stitching and embroideries, but adding it, the cherry on the cake, I think we could say, the GT owner's kit to match and go with the entire car. So that's it for now. I appreciate your support, and I will see you again very, very soon. Cheers.